We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we'll pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. with each other we will work side by side we will work with each other we will work side by side and we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are christians by our love All praise to the Father from whom all things come, and all praise to Christ Jesus is His only Son, and all praise to the Spirit who makes us one, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love, yes, they'll know we are
Thank you, musicians, for setting the tone for worship. A welcome to this Trinity Sunday worship service, both all of us gathered here um, in the worship space and also online. It is good to be together. Uh, this Sunday, we are excited to welcome some new members into our membership, and some of them you already know because they've been volunteering, <laughs> so thank you. Um, and in the month of June and through the summer, we're collecting cereal. Trudy, would you come forward and say a word about that from the AMBO? So good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, thanks to all of you who are bringing in cereal this morning. I think we're up to almost 50 boxes, and we're going to have a chart that keeps track of all of this. Um, the Bryant Action Community Network um, is the place where we are bringing our cereal to. And of course, in these more difficult times with inflation, um, these are really a staple for a lot of the families that go to Bryant. So I want to encourage you when you're going shopping, never shop alone, grab a box or two. There's a big yellow box out there that's almost full, so I put another box next to it. Um, but if you could bring those in, that would be great. We have a goal by the end of July to have 200, and there's several families that'll be bringing these boxes every couple of weeks. So again, we thank you for all of you who have brought, and thanks in advance for all those of you who are bringing them in the next few weeks. Thank you. Thank you. So some of you may remember that in this past Lenten season, we took a time to listen to the voices of indigenous peoples of this land and honoring their ways of honoring all living things, we've created a dialogue for the summertime to center our thoughts and our hearts as we come into worship. And so we'll be starting worship with that dialogue. I invite you to stand either in body or spirit and to take a deep cleansing breath and exhale and another one. And we'll take just a moment of silence before we begin. On this new morning, let us pause to be mindful of this time and place, of sights and sounds around us, of all that brings life, sun, moon, and rain, the sound and touch of wind and water, the land beneath our feet, plants and animals who live let us be mindful of the people who have gone before us. Ones who passed on the faith and provided this church. Indigenous people who lived before us. And who live among us still. Give us grateful hearts. That we might worship and live in reverence. For these holy moments. And for the life we share. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Psalm 8. Lord, our, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouth of infants and children. You have set a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider the, your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what mere mortals, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them. Yet you have made them a little less than divine. With glory and honor, you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing of the glory of God. And not only that, we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, 
and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will speak not on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and I'd like to invite the young people to come and sit in the front row for the young people's message. So if you want to come on down. As we're waiting for them, what's one of the things that you love most about little ones? They're so much fun. Yeah, what else? They're candid. They're candid. They're honest. Enthusiastic what? About everything. Oh my goodness, yes. Which helps to raise the energy level. I find that the energy level goes up when little ones are around almost all the time. Come have a seat. Charlotte and Teddy and Catherine. Catherine, come on. All right. Little ones like to play. I like to play. So good morning. Hi. <laughs> Teddy's laughing already. We have um, some new people joining our congregation this morning, and they are from a congregation in the area that had to close, which was um, sad, and they started worshiping other places and said, hey, we want to join here. And when their congregation was clo closing, they asked if we might be able to... Um, take something that had been very special to them and contribute it to, some, to a project that's very special to us, that together we could make a difference in the world. And what they, what they contributed were these beautiful quilts, oh my goodness, that members had made. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, members made the quilt squares, and in the squares, um, they made things to represent their families, right? What do you see? What do you see on this quilt? Do you see some items you recognize? A what? A diamond. Yeah. A flower. <laughs> Trees and cross. My goodness, they're so beautiful, and they represent um, the members. And after they made these quilts. They put them, they hung them in their church, and they were so special, and they thought, gosh, we, 
we want them to go to some good use, but what? And so they asked if we could contribute them to our quilt ministry that goes to help people who are in need. I'm going to show you the other quilt, too. They're both just so pretty. You see a rainbow? Oh, cool. What else do you see? What? Christmas tree? Ooh, do you know what this is? What's that? A guitar! My goodness, so there's music. And what's that? A saw. Somebody likes to make things. And that? A measuring tape, basketball, and oh my goodness. I think there are gardeners and musicians and builders and crossword puzzle workers. I like crossword puzzles. Cool. So these beautiful, beautiful quilts. And they said, you know, can they add them to the quilts that, that we make and send them to places where they're needed? And so this is a quilt made by our quilters, right? And so we add together stuff from people who have been here and people who are new to here. Just like on worship, whoever comes to worship, it's the people gathered that make Jesus known and share Jesus' love on a Sunday morning. So, you know, we look for ways that we can work together to show Jesus' love, to praise God at all times. If you were welcoming somebody new, what might you want to do? I like how you think. Yeah. All right. And do you know every week worship is kind of a party with, with music and celebration. And also after worship, we're going to have refreshments. You like refreshments after church? Uh, cookies and snacks? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. I don't know what kind of cookies they are, so we have to find out after, after church. Oh, yeah, me too. So I'm excited to the people who contribute to the refreshments, to the people that contribute to music and sign language and uh, the prayers and the readings. So all of us together make the church on this special day, and that's wonderful. So I want you to remember this week that God loves you, and God has a beautiful place uh, for you here at church with all the people together together. Together we can show love in really beautiful ways. So thanks for coming to the young people's message. You can go back to your seats. When Joni brought these quilts, I said, oh, I want to use them in a children's sermon first. So thank you so much for the quilts. They're so beautiful. And they are going to go to somebody who, who is in need, and they're going to be tangible signs of God's love and caring for them. So thank you. Something that fascinates me about my now 15-month-old granddaughter is how she watches and listens to the people who are speaking to her. Now, this was from a few months ago, and not infrequently, she has a facial expression that seems curious, maybe even a little skeptical, as if she is evaluating and trying to understand not only the words, but the person before her. Is what you are telling me true? What do you want me to understand? Are you teasing me or is this serious? Are you trustworthy? Her dog, Albie, is a being that she has trusted from the very beginning. I don't think she's ever given him that look that you just saw. 
She's trusted him to be a kind and a good dog, and he has been. He's trustworthy and will never harm her, even if at times he runs very quickly to get out of reach, if she seems perhaps just a bit too exuberant and unpredictable in the moment. I'm glad about that look in her eyes that sometimes seems skeptical, because we all know that not everyone can be trusted in this world. Am I right? It's, it's important to know who and what is worthy of our trust and can be relied upon to be true. I pray for her and all children that they may be wise and discerning of who and what is trustworthy and dependable. In our Gospel for Trinity Sunday, taken from the last discourse, the final conversation Jesus has with his disciples before leaving for the Garden of Gethsemane, his place of betrayal and arrest, Jesus says, I still have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. These words seem to leap off the page this week as our nation is embroiled in debate about what is true about events in the nation, both in recent weeks and um, back on January 6th of 2021. What really happened? What do those events mean? Who is responsible? What should we be done? What should we do to further protect against outbreaks of violence and needless? death. Where do we turn for guidance and for solid footing on information that is true and won't give way? What is the truth that can be trusted to guide us in times ahead? What is the nature of truth? While one of the definitions of truth and one which we may think of first is a matter of being factual and accurate. Some of the earliest meaning and use of the word had to do with trustworthiness, faithfulness, sincerity in action, character, fidelity, and constancy. In this strange age where people argue vehemently about what is fact and what isn't, which facts are real and which ones are false, it seems to me perhaps we need to reach back further in searching for truth to what and who is sincere in action, character, and speech. Who and what can be trusted to remain constant in what they say and what they most truly stand for and how they live. As my granddaughter, still so new to this world, reminds me, knowing who you can rely upon matters greatly. Truth, it seems, is deeply connected to character. I still have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Jesus understands our need for one who is trustworthy, reliable. So how do we find that spirit of truth? How do we tap into the truth that can guide us in uncertain and precarious times? Today, the church celebrates a doctrine, a teaching, a belief that the one and only God has a triune form that we recognize as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or creator of all, Jesus, and spirit. Spirit of truth is the invisible and, and true manifestation of the character and the heart of the one who created all things and keeps life in continuity. The spirit of truth is the one who bears witness reliably and consistently to the person of Jesus who came and lived as one of us to teach us the way of God's love for us and for all. 
Ultimately, human language cannot adequately describe nor contain God. The fullness of God will always remain a mystery to us. I like what Reverend Suzanne Guthrie writes, in the end, knowing God is as elusive as predicting a firefly's trajectory over a field of hay after dusk, as futile as keeping track of a drop of rain fallen into the ocean in a storm, as blinding as gazing into the sun, which I don't recommend. While we cannot define God adequately or completely with our words, the heart, the human heart that watches and listens, recognizes when God is near, the trustworthy one, the ground underneath our feet that will not give out in troubled times. So back to our original question, who or what can be trusted as we make our way through life? What guides and grounds our behavior and our choices in matters large and small? The spirit that Jesus sends is the one who holds firm and who guides even when the world is in chaos around us. The spirit of truth works and can be seen where dynamics between people lead to cooperation in life and peace, where there is community marked by equity, fairness, justice with mercy, healing, and nurturance. The spirit of truth comes to work goodness of life in and for all people together. If you see powers uh, forces of power working for the good of some over and against others, at the expense of others, causing suffering for others, the spirit of truth is not at work there. Let me be clear. But where you see bridges of caring across difference, people who may hold different philosophies, beliefs, and convictions coming together to work good, coming together in caring, the spirit of truth is at work in those places. Reverend Cheryl Lindsay tells a story. A few years ago, I had a conversation with a classmate and a friend. He's an ordained elder in the Assemblies of God, and I am an ordained minister in the United Church of Christ. My friend is more liberal than those in his church or community, but there is still a distance between some of our theological views. He asked me with genuine curiosity if there were any parts of the Bible that I take literally. I smiled and said, I believe that all of us who turn toward the Bible have parts we take literally and others that are considered more symbolically or allegorically. I told him there's a great deal that I take literally, such as loving your neighbor, no condemnation in Christ, and being created in the divine image. He asked me about one particular event in the Bible, and I said that I don't know, but that I realized that my faith isn't dependent on the Bible being factual. If it isn't factual, he asks, how do I characterize it? I responded, I consider it true. He smiled and said, I'm glad that we're friends. The feeling was mutual. There is something recognizable and true that they both can recognize, a foundation for each that's more solid and important than their differences, something that can unite in concord and good beyond and across their different understandings. In music, a note is said to be true when it is in tune, in its purest resonance and sound. When people join this congregation, it is due at least in part because they have found resonance with the spirit that animates our life together here. When people decide to join Trinity, it's because they have found resonance with how people are with one another in this place and found resonance with the ministries that we engage. The people here are fallible. The pastor 
is definitely fallible and sometimes disappoints. In this congregation, as in other congregations, you'll find we're not perfect. But as long as we keep striving for the way of love together, as long as we're willing to listen to one another with openness, sincerity, and respect, as long as we're willing to own that we have imperfections, sometimes we, make, we are mistaken to say we're sorry and truly mean it. As long as we strive to remain true, steadfast to one another in times of trouble, and rejoicing with one another in times of joy, then the spirit of truth will indeed lead this community, guide this community forward to the ministry that God intends for us together. I will never forget the spouse of a member who was both atheistic and very supportive of his wife, cherishing her abiding connection with God, cherish, who, cherishing worship, gladly contributing to the needs of others. Her husband once said to me, I don't believe in God, but I believe in Hetzi. And that's something. There's something in that. On the basis of what he saw and experienced in his wife, he contributed to this congregation's work. He saw, had some resonance. He saw some integrity. He saw some good imparted to others, something life-giving, stirring, and circulating among us and beyond us to the world. My friends, the spirit of truth sometimes flows through us in ways that resonate with integrity and goodness that draws others into God's presence. These comprise the ground that holds true when everything else gives way, gives out, or falls apart. The goodness and beauty of this wonderful life we are given the blessing that often manifests in community, in relationship with one another, the love of Jesus that animates people every day who live by the pattern of returning, returning, and returning to the practice of love in the spirit of Jesus. So let us pray. Spirit of truth, Move among all of us who gather in this worship. Ground us in goodness. Guide us in love that heals, that makes peace, that spreads loving kindness throughout the whole world, that you so love that you sent Jesus to live among us. Yeah.
us join in confessing our faith on this Trinity Sunday through the words passed on to us in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated, and at this time, I would like to call forward by name those who are joining our congregation. And as I call you by name, if you would come and stand on the Bema platform, that would be great. So Onda Symes has been Trinity's bookkeeper since 2016. She likes to travel, read, and play with her grandson, who lives in the area. So. Um, if you want to face the people, <laughs> I'll try to read quickly. Tina, Terry, Joe, and Dan Carnes. Tina works in customer service at Tim Hortons. She crochets, flower gardens, likes being outdoors, and campfires. Uh, Terry works at Paraton, supporting customers with computer tech, uh, plays bass guitar, as you've seen many weeks now, sings. Tina sings also. Uh, Terry supports Scout Troop 231 in Belleville and also enjoys camping. And Joe and Dan also work at Tim Hortons. They are a very close family. Joni Langinus is a former metallurgist for General Motors, now working as an American Sign Language interpreter, as you have seen. Sings, plays uh, piano, led the praise band and singers at St. Mark's. She enjoys making quilts, especially baby quilts, and enjoys audio books. And Maggie Miller, the former chemist, she's a massage therapist here in Ann Arbor. She enjoys being outdoors, gardening, raising monarch butterflies, and hiking. She's been working behind the scenes uh, during COVID and beyond uh, to maintain our baptismal font to uh, assure healthy, water quality, which we appreciate, especially given all the baptisms we've had in recent times. And all reported in one way or another to find Trinity very warm and welcoming and um, a place that, that, feel, that can feel like home. Dear friends, We rejoice to receive you who are already members of one holy Catholic and apostolic church into our fellowship in the gospel. You've chosen to join us in fulfilling the particular ministry that God has entrusted to Trinity Lutheran Church, and we are already so blessed by your presence. In affirmation of your decision to join our congregation, I ask you, Will you pray for this congregation, nurture the people here, and support them with your presence at worship, and faithfully contribute a measure of the gifts God has entrusted to you? If so, please say, I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed? And following the example of our Lord Jesus, strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, please say, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. Members of Trinity, will you stand in support of those joining our congregation today? Will you stand with them in their times of trial, support them in their moments of sorrow, and rejoice with them in their triumph? Will you support them with your presence and worship, gifts from your abundance, and Christian affection in fellowship? If so, please say, I will, and I ask God to help me. I 
I will, and I ask God to help me. Let us welcome these new members with our acclamation. And Joe just showed in American Sign Language one or both hands, yay! <laughs> you may return to your seats and the congregation may be seated for the prayers. Oh, I have gifts. Oh my goodness. Cards. <laughs> this is for the Carnes. <laughs> Joni. <laughs> and Anda and Maggie. Gifts. <laughs> it's been a long time since we've done this new member thing <laughs> all together. <laughs> it feels good though, yes? United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church creation, and all who are in need. <clears throat> Scripture assures us that we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from your mouth, O God. May the church and we, its members, seek the life that you alone can give. God of grace, hear our prayer. We bless you, O God, for the good land that you have given us, land flowing with streams, springs, and underground waters, a land of wheat and barley, of vines, fig trees, and honey. May we rejoice in your bountiful creation, which provides all we need to live. God of grace, hear our prayer. Grant us the grace to be content with what we have, O God. May those who govern strive for righteousness in order to ensure that all people have enough to live and need not live in fear. God of grace, hear our prayer. Grant strength to all who suffer, especially Cicely, Lisa, Tina, Mary Lynn, Patrick, Milt, Jennifer, Luana, Mara, Laura, Sherry, and those we name before you now. Certain of your goodness, may we hold fast to the promise that we can do all things through you. God of grace, you bind up the brokenhearted and conquer death. Grant rest, eternal God, to all who have died, especially Debbie Sheff, cousin of Barb Daniel, Don Long, brother of John Althaus, and Ron Turks, friend of the Baldus family. Embrace with peace their loved ones and all who grieve. God of grace, God of abundant life, we thank you for Bill, Jane, Becca, Beth, and Joel, who are celebrating their birthdays this week. For Tara and Brian, Mary Ann and Bill, Georgia and Jim, who are celebrating their wedding anniversary. For Laura's good report following surgery. We thank you for the birth of Alistair Vandershear to Aaron and Alex, and for all of life's blessings. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts to your holy keeping. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might, heaven and Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth, for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey, for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one, for the death and resurrection of Christ, and for your spirit poured out on us and on all nations. In the night of his betrayal, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This bread is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our tables with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered together by the Spirit of truth, let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. There will be two stations for communion. Please follow the direction of the ushers. All are welcome at this table, which is the table of Christ. Uh, those who are communing at home, your gifts are blessed through the worship that we share. Um, come and receive the body and the blood of the living Christ.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand and body your spirit for the closing blessing. May the spirit of the living Christ fill you with faith and trust. God the Father, God of peace, <laughs> Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and comfort you and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. for the service conclusion, please come and gather uh, around the table outside the parking lot door for refreshments and to greet our newest members. Go in peace, love your neighbor.